In this video, we'll solve an n-degree freedom system of equations, um, discuss the general solution first of all, and then we'll apply it to a specific 2 by 2 problem. So the form of the equations of motion to be solved is mx double dot, and I'll write explicitly that this is a function of t, plus k x of t equals 0, and in this case it's actually the vector 0. Okay. In order to solve this, we assume simple harmonic motion. We saw this from the single degree of freedom system. Simple harmonic motion, which means that x of t is of the form um, some vector that we'll call x bar and sine of omega t plus that's the assumption of simple harmonic motion. If we differentiate this twice, let's give these numbers one, two. Differentiating twice gives us x double dot of t is equal to minus omega squared x bar sine of omega t plus phi, which can be simplified to minus omega squared x. So to differentiate x of t twice, we just multiply by minus omega squared. We'll call that number 3. All right, now we want to substitute both 2 and 3 into 1. Let's write that. And substituting that gives us m times minus omega squared x of t plus k x of t equals 0. And this will be rewritten as k minus omega squared m, which in itself produces a matrix, times x of t equals 0. We'll call this equation 4. Now it follows from equation 4 that for non-trivial solutions, x of t can't be 0. Let's say that for non-trivial solutions, x of t is not equal to 0. Well, if x of t is not equal to 0, and equation 4 is always equal to 0, then what multiplies x of t must be 0. But since we're dealing with a matrix, we don't say the matrix is 0, but rather the determinant of that matrix is equal to 0. Okay? So it follows from equation 4 that the determinant of k minus omega squared m equals to 0. And this is now zero scalar, not a vector. Now cast your mind back to your linear algebra classes. You might remember that assuming the determinant of k minus omega squared m is zero, what it means is that there is no unique solution for this. Why? Well, if there were a unique solution, it would simply be x equals zero. Okay? And another way to think of the determinant is almost like the magnitude. I don't really want to use the word magnitude, but it's almost like the magnitude of a matrix. So if the determinant is 0, you're actually multiplying. It's kind of like multiplied by 0. All right. So equation 5 is also known as the characteristic equation, and that is what must hold to satisfy the equations of motion given in 1. It must hold at all times. Okay? And also equation 5 is for any general n degree of freedom system, or any n by n, k, and m matrix. Um, for the purpose of showing an example, we're going to turn back to a previous problem that we derived in an earlier video. It was a two degree of freedom system. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of it now, but I'm just going to write down what the results were that we found. We had a K matrix that looked like this, minus K2, minus K2, K2. And let me squeeze it in here, mass matrix. It was very simply M1, 0, 0, M2. Okay. And we're going to further simplify this by making the assumption that K1 is equal to K2 
and we'll just call that K. And similarly, M1 equals M2 equals M. Uh, this will be equation six up top here. All right, so the K matrix then reduces to 2K minus K minus K, K. And the mass matrix is very simply M0, 0, 0 M. We'll call that 7. Right. Now, finding the characteristic equation for this K and M matrix, we simply take equation 7 and plug it into equation 5. So that says the determinant, we write it shorthand like this, of K minus omega squared M, which is 2K minus omega squared M minus K minus K, K minus omega squared M. And the determinant of that is equal to 0. The 2 by 2 matrix determinant is very, very simple. We multiply the diagonal terms and subtract the product of the off-diagonal terms. So we end up with 2K minus omega squared M times K minus omega squared M minus K squared equals 0. Multiply it out and rewrite it, collecting powers of omega. So we take omega 4 times m squared plus omega squared times minus km minus 2km, so it's minus 3km, and k squared is 2k squared minus k squared is plus k squared equals 0. This is just the standard solution for the roots of a quadratic. I mean, in this case, they're all squared, so omega 1 and 2 squared is equal to minus 3km plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 9k squared m squared, minus 4, whoops, minus 4 times m squared k squared. All over 2m squared. Okay, and this can be rewritten, rewritten as um, this should be a plus, not a minus 3 km. So it should be 3 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2 times k over m. And I'm just going to simply rewrite this that omega 1 squared is equal to a 1 squared k over m, and similarly omega 2 squared is equal to a2 squared times k over m. Make some more room. Okay, where a1 squared is equal to 3 minus root 5 over 2, and a2 squared is equal to 3 plus root 5 over 2. Okay, and these are the frequencies of the system. Well, omega is the frequency. These are the frequencies squared. We can easily solve for omega 1 and omega 2. Right, let me take that back. Omega 1 is simply equal to A1 root K over M. The A1 is given above, and omega 2 is equal to A2 root K over M. Okay, so let's look at the first mode now, mode 1. We want to see if we can find our mode shapes now that we have our, our frequencies. So the first case is omega whoops, omega is equal to omega 1. Okay. 
We go back to the original equation that we had to solve, the one with the determinant, that said something like, um, or before we took the determinant, it said k minus omega squared m times x of t equals 0. So let's substitute it all in. We get k, uh, 2k minus omega 1 squared m minus k, k, k minus omega 1 squared m times x1, x2 of t. equals zero. Now in order to find our eigenvectors, we can pick either the top or the bottom equation. Why is that? Because the determinant of this matrix, matrix is equal to zero, it means that both these equations are in fact the same. They're linear combinations. The one is a multiple of the other. In other words, they are not independent. We cannot find a unique x1 and x2. So we will pick x1 and then find x2 from that. So taking the top, the top equation says that 2k minus omega 1 squared m, that times x1 t is equal to minus k x2 t. Okay, this means solving for x2 of t. Let's assume that x1 is just equal to 1. And what that means is this implies x2 of t is equal to, we'll write it out in full first of all, so it's 1 over k times um, 2k minus omega squared m is a1 squared times k over m times m. All right, so the k's cancel, the m's cancel, and you're left with x2 oops, is very simply 2 minus a1 squared. So your first mode shape is very simply 1, 2 minus a1 squared. And I'm just going to say here, similarly, mode 2 is equal to 1, 2 minus a2 squared. Now, these modes are not normalized. You can normalize it if you want, although it wasn't required. Um, but now you have your modes and your... Uh, and your frequencies. Um, let me write it on the following page, just so it's neat. And we're going to put it all together now and write the final form of the equations of motion. The final form of the equations of motion look like this. You've got x of t is equal to some constant c1 times the first mode shape, which was 2, excuse me, it wasn't 2, it was 1, and 2 minus a1 squared times sine omega 1 t plus v plus some other constant c2 times the second mode shape 1 2 minus a2 squared times sine omega 2 t plus v and in general, you'll be given two initial conditions from which you can solve for C1 and C2. Your initial conditions will be something of the form the vector x at time equals 0 is just some given position vector x0. And similarly, the velocity or x dot at time equals 0 equals v0. I think just a couple of things to mention here, and maybe casting your mind back to linear algebra. Um, your eigenvectors form a basis, which means they span the entire vector space, which also means that 
any position or any point within the xy space can be written as a linear combination. Uh, sorry, not the xy space, but the x1, x2 space. can be written as a linear combination of your natural modes or of your eigenvectors. The other thing to remember is your eigenvectors are orthogonal. Um, I don't want to say too much about that, except rather than thinking of orthogonality as axes being 90 degrees from one another, because that doesn't really hold up beyond three, three degrees, three dimensions, I should say. Um, you should rather think of it as orthogonal means there's no component of one in the direction of the other. So the dot product is zero. That's all I want to speak about on this video for now. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you've enjoyed what I've presented, please give us a thumbs up. It would really help. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.